Hey! This is Connectionary, and welcome to Flutter from Scratch 2023. There are many benefits you are going to get from this course. You don't have to install anything. We are going to use online Flutter free IDE to make tutorial short and easy. We will understand the fundamental of programming. And also this is going to be very simple and easy to understand. Move to Flutlab IO using any browser. Click on sign up button and sign up for free. Once you sign up it will redirect you to dashboard. Now click on new project button to create a project. Fill the form and create. The project is completely ready to go. Now click on it to open. It may take some time for first time. Now you can see all the files and folder in the sidebar. You can also get a web emulator to launch the project. Now click on this button to launch the project. It may take some time. Congratulations, we did create our first app using Flutter. Let's remove all the codes and start from beginning. Write these lines of code. This main curly brackets are the place where we have to write code to execute. Let's try to print something into console. Press Ctrl plus S to save. You can see it printed it successfully. Now let's remove this print statement. Use run app to execute our app. Write my app inside the run app brackets. And also make sure to put open and close brackets in front of my app. And just write stless and select this option have square at the front of the text. Also rename it. Now click on this button to run the project. It can take some time to launch while launching but to reload it takes a fraction of seconds. Once it is launched, replace container with material app. I promise I will explain all these one by one after few seconds. Now write this line with me. Again write st less and select this option. Also rename it as home page. Now replace container with scaffold. Press this button to reload the project. You can see this blank white screen. Let's show something on screen, then we will understand how it is working. Just follow me, and write with me, I will explain all the things after this. Now you can see our app is showing at least one text. We did written these codes to get this screen. Let's see how it is working. To understand let's break it down into different blocks. The block number 3 is just to develop screen. The block number 2 is to execute the screen on the app. And the block number 1 is to run the app. Let's understand how third block is building a screen. The scaffold tells the app that this block is screen. The center aligns its child at the center. And text is to add text into the app. So let's move on block number 2. Material app tells that this is the app which will follow material design. If you don't know, what is material design? Material design is a design pattern published by Android team, which must be followed while developing Android application. Home page is the screen that we built previously in block number 3. Finally at block number 1. My app is the app that we created in block number 2. And run app runs that app. Run app can be set as app launcher, my app can be set as screen executor, and home page can be set as screen. Also you can replace the screen to be executed. I hope you are clear about everything. If you have any confusion you can visit to link I attached below in description. Let's build this screen so our app looks good. So firstly we have to build this app bar. To build this screen let's understand scaffold deeply. Usually scaffold divides the screen into three parts. App bar, body, and floating action button. To add app bar just use app bar division of scaffold. And pass app bar. And also add title with text. Now launch the app. You can see the app bar appeared. 
Let's change the background color of app bar. While the color also changed. Also make center tile to false. To understand what is happening here. Let's take a quick look on classes and objects. Let's create a new file. To create class, just write class and then name it as to do. And now put curly brackets. So now it is a class. Suppose there is a school bag. We know that it can carry books, geometry box, lunch box, and a water bottle. Because the creator of the bag built places where these things can be kept. Same like bag, we can use class to build any object. Let's create a to do object that can carry one text. To create object, we have to create class, and inside the class we have to specify the arguments. This is what king of thing will be stored, and this is the location path. Write this line to build the object. Now let's see how can we use this object. I am creating a function to show you, but if you don't know what is function, we will surely discuss about it later. Let's use our object. Now you can put your text into to do by specifying path. Same as we put water bottle in a side bag of the school bag. Like same way, here scaffold is a pre built object by Flutter. Keep pressing Ctrl and click on scaffold to see this kind of interface. You can see there are a bunch of many different paths, technically, they are called property. This is path, and this is value. For now, I will call property to path, because technically path is called property. This body is also property, and we are keeping center in it. If you press Ctrl plus click on app bar, you can also see it's all property. And you can also check for all other values. The word before colon is property, and after is value. All these words with capital later at first are class, which is also called Flutter widget. To understand, we can say that all the words with capital later at front of it can be said as Flutter widget. To explore more, please visit to this link on the screen. Firstly, let's replace center with column. Formate the code. Save the project, press Ctrl plus S. Now you can see two children of column are in screen vertically arranged. Make it start to bring them at first. Remove this icon. Replace title. Use its style property and pass text style as value. Now use properties of text style to decorate the text. Also change the color of the text. Now wrap the column with container and use its padding property. Now put your expanded widget. Now pass list view. Now use children property. Formate it. Pass list tile widget. Make sure to check all the widgets from the link I given before. Use leading property to pass circle avatar. Now also use child property to pass text. Now formate it. Now use title property to pass text. Wrap list tile with card. Again wrap list tile with padding. Copy and paste the card two to three times.
Now wrap the list view with padding widget. Replace this with only, so we can give padding only from top side. Let's bring this text to start. For that just use cross axis alignment property. Wrap this text with padding. And also replace this all with symmetric. Now you can pad this vertically or horizontally. Now use floating action button property of scaffold and pass floating action button. Use child property to pass icon. Also use unpressed property. Formate it. We also got our floating action button. Change background color of floating action button. Let's also change color of card. Also change background color of circle avatar. Let's remove this banner. For that go to block number 2. Use this property of material app and pass false. Save the project. We did written this codes many time to build these card. Instead of writing these codes multiple time, can we write them in one place and use them for many times? Let's do it. Create new widget and name it as info card. Copy these codes which we have to use for multiple time. Now replace this container with those code snippet. Now when you call this widget, you will get a card. So let's replace those huge bunch of codes with this small widget. Also use it as many cards as you want. Now launch it to see the changes. Once it is launched, you can see it is same as before. We did built our user interface completely. But as expected, it must add new to do once we press this add button. It also asks for new title. To understand this let's move to our classes file. And name this file as brain. Create a new class named brain. Write this line with me. Now let's understand. How will it work? This is online Dart compiler. I am using this to teach you some Dart concept. You can also visit to it by this URL. Let's create main function. Now try to print something. Here it is working. Let's store this string into a variable and print it. It thrown some error. This happened because we didn't declare the data type of variable. To declare data type, just write it before the name. Here, string is data type, a is name, and cadectionary is value. Now you can see it works. As we know, cadectionary is string data, so it worked. But what happens if we replace with any it value? It thrown error because we did try to store it value in string variable. To make it work, we must put correct data type. See, now it worked. Let's see what happens if we change its value into string. It thrown error. It is because we tried to store string value into in variable. Let's make it string variable and again try. Here, you can see it also changed its value. I hope you understood what is data type, variables, and value.
let's explore some more data type. List is a data type which will store data in form of list. Let's print it. You can see it did printed empty list. Let's add some data into it. Now print it. You can see it did printed it. Let's rename it. In the same way, let's take a look on map. Map stores data in form of key and value. Let's add some dummy data. Username is key and Cadectionary is value. That mean when we call username, it will give you Cadectionary. Same way, when we call password, it will give you pass. Let's try to print username. Here it did printed Cadectionary. Let's print password. And yes, it also did printed password. In case of list, you can target its data by index. Such as, to get first data you have to write 0, and for second write 1 and so on. Here it is printing data. Let's see bool data type. It stores boolean data, such as true or false value. I hope you are a little familiar now with data, data types, and more. There are many thousands of other data types. Make sure to check them from Dart.dev. We will be also discussing some more data types later. Let's get back to workspace. Let's create a function. Function is block of code which performs certain task. To create function, firstly name it then put small brackets and the curly brackets at last. Let's add data through this function. To add data just write name of the list and then dot add. Now pass value. Also print data. Now let's call it from main.dart file. Write this line to create an object of that class. Also let's import this. Now all the values and functions of this class can be used using this variable brain, so this variable is called object of this class. Now use this unpressed property of this floating action button to call add to do function. Now let's launch it. Once it is launched, press floating action button. You can see it did printed it. Also if press it multiple times, it is also adding new element. Remove this text, because we don't want to add same element multiple time. Just write here A. And use this A as variable. It is showing error. We have to pass value, for the variable that we just declared, as A. Just save both pages, and try to press floating action button. It is printing that value that we just passed. But, it is not asking us for title, it is just adding same text every time. So let's create a dialog, which will ask for title every time we press this button. Let's pass context instead of a string test. Because we will need context on the function to add to do. Now also rename this variable as context. Now user show dialog, flutter prebuilt function to open dialog. Just write these lines to open dialog. I promise once you write these codes two to three times, you will automatically remember it. Now return alert dialog. Let's store this dialog in variable, so when we submit input it will be stored in this. We got this error to solve this just write async before curly brackets and await before show dialog. Now let's understand what async and await is. Suppose you have a function. Firstly this will print video title, then it will download the video, then this will play it. 
Just think for function, to print it will not take any time, but to download it will take 25 minutes, and then it will also not take time to play it. When you execute the function, it will print title immediately, and then it goes to line number 2, and it will start to download, but it will not wait here for 25 minutes, it will directly goes to line number 3, and tries to play the video. Now just think if the video is not downloaded yet, how it can be played. Which cause it's crashing. To solve, here async and awaits comes. Once we use this, program will wait for line number 2, to be completed, it will only move to line number 3, once 2 is completed. So this solves our problem. In the same way, we must have to wait and show dialog to get input, and then that input can be added to list. Here, when we are adding element, it is now showing dialog. But there is no option to submit. Let's add a button. We will use outline button here. It is also pre-built widget that comes with Flutter. Now you can see it have a button. But when we are pressing, it is not performing any work. It must close the dialog and give some value that can be stored to A to store it in list. Firstly, let's close it. To close, you have to write this line. You can see it is closing the dialog. Just look at this, it is only adding null to our list. Because, our dialog is not giving anything right now. To make dialog to give value, we just have to pass value from here. After this context. Now when you press submit, it will add this while to list. Let's also try to pass some other value. It is only adding that value which we just passed. Our input field is not working. Let's store this value in a variable. And pass it. Alright, let's test it. It is working as expected. Listen, text field must update this title once we write anything on it. Let's do it. To do so text field have unchanged property. This value will store whatever we write in text field. So let's store it in title. Let's check it out. Wow, it is adding perfectly. Now let's replace this default title value with empty string. Look at this, if we even don't write anything in text field, it is also adding the value. Let's check here, if A is not empty then only it will add value. Now let's check it. Alright it is working now. Now we have a list of to do, now we have to show them into screen. So here list view builders comes. It is a flutter widget which will also act as list view, but it have ability to generate list view elements. So let's implement it on our app. Let's replace this list view with list view builder. Now pass context and index. Now return that info card. Reload it. Now you will see infinity number of elements generated. You can also declare the number of element you want by using item count. We need number of element equal to the length of our to-do length. We can get length of to-do list by using brain object. So pass its length to item count. Once you reload you will see, all elements are disappeared. This is because, currently we don't have any data to show.
So let's add one. You can see it did add it into list. But our UI is not updated. To update UI let's convert this stateless to stateful widget. Now let's add this after this line. This set state will update the UI. And we did converted stateless to stateful because set state can only be used in stateful. Now let's check it again. Again it is not updated. Can you tell me why it is not working? If you know comment below reason before watching solution. This is not working because in first line it is taking time to complete the action. And we didn't awaited it. It is directly going to next line, which caused the UI get updated before list element is added. So, let's add async and await it. Reload and let's check it out. Okay, now you can see it is working properly. Let's understand what is stateless and stateful widget. As I told you before, set state updates UI. We can only call set state in stateful widget, not in stateless widget. So, simply it can be said as the difference between stateless and stateful widget. When we are adding any element, it is showing same title and index. It must show a title that we added, not just do homework every time. If we replace this with hello, it will start to show hello. I think you understood the problem. We must have to put different title for different cards. We have to pass title and index from here. Firstly, let's print our titles separately. We have a list that carries data in form of list. And we can target the data by passing their index position, as I told you while learning data types. Our index number is index. Index changes its value from zero every time a card built. It means, for first card, index equals to zero, for second, one, for third, two, and so on. So now when you reload program, you will see it will print them separately. Here you can see, it did print the title separately. Now let's pass this title to the card. To pass, we have to create constructor, like this way. Now the data passed from above, will be stored into this title, so let's use it. Also let's pass title. Reload, and try it. Wow it worked. Also pass for index number. Reload and test it. You can see it did started from zero. This is because index carries zero for first time. To solve just pass, index plus one as index. Test it again, it is solved. Lastly, we must have delete button at last of this card. Let's use trailing property of list tile. And get the unpressed function from constructor. So we can pass from above. Also use it. Let's pass function from above. Let's understand, what is inheritance? We did used info card inside the home page, so info card is child of home page. And home page is parent of info card.
Also, we did pass title, index, and unpressed from home page to info card. In another word, we pass data from parents to child, this is called inheritance. I hope, you got a little concept of inheritance. Lastly, let's create a function to delete data. Move to brain file. Create a function named, delete. Pass index as argument. Use dot remove to delete and pass this. Now call this from here. Also call set state to update UI. Also replace this close icon with done. Change the color if you want. Just put your open and closing bracket. Now let's launch the program. Okay, it is Let me add some to do. Like the video. Okay, you liked. Let's mark it as done. It's time to subscribe. Did you subscribe? Thank you. Now share it with your friends. Comment something below. Also let's mark it as done. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from the video.